hard rock to a minimum. Corn Warriors is presented by Pivot Bio. Here we go. Set the tone for the Crop Scout Tour. I like it. Fun. <laughs> that was just for y'all. Having fun, you ain't living. That's right. Take one. Nope, take two. So we're so invested in corn warriors and getting to tell this story that we just come in here and just drive through the cornfield where we can walk it. You know, Concept Agritech's here today, you know, and we're going to just take a walk and look at corn. I'm like, man, you know Mark, pretty as he is here. You know, we don't need him. Itchies, He's a little itchy. I'm yeah, like, you know, yeah. we don't put our people through that. So we just come out here and drive through the cornfield where we can make a walk, meander around, you know, and Man. look at some corn, look at some hybrids, you know. I don't know why I didn't bring the golf cart. I was why didn't stuff. I bring the golf cart? <laughs> so we get to do some riding, you know, get off, get us a good cold drink, you know, you don't look at some corn, just keep a little walking. Yeah. I didn't I didn't know if you were doing a, a corn maze or what out here. Yeah, yeah, you know, we may just may just get it into that, you know, just get in right into the corn maze part. So let's talk about this strip we're driving in right here that we're walking in that somebody else drove in. So this is one of our irrigated farms. This farm is going to go to houses. They need to do some core drilling. And so they're like, hey, we got to do some core drilling. You know, you need to stop pivot for a minute. You know, just let you buzz through. Yeah. So let me go and drive there. I think the spot is over there, but I'm going to meander around a little bit with a core drilling rig and figure out where the pin is. Yeah. You know, like, well, I think it's over one. here. Not you this know? one. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, this is what we get into. You know, and it's part of it. You know, it's... Uh, it's what we deal with, and you know, I guess I'm just thankful that uh, they drove through my corn, but I'm thankful that I got to work it another year. You there know, you I mean, man. it could have been nothing out here, and they could drove this, and now we're going. But you know, they let me work it another year, and it's part of it. You know, this is the kind of stuff we deal with. We work several farms that are on year-to-year -year basis, and you know, we've had like lost 200 to concrete last year. Right. You know, and it's just you just give and take all the time. I feel like every time I'm down here there's new buildings popping up and yep. I mean like you said it's Yeah, I don't know where a lot it's... of people don't think about but in the area where you're at and a lot of other, you know, parts of the country that's something something you got to deal with. Yep. Just kinda and you know what what hurts what hurts some of this is this has been some of my uh I guess probably I've pulled probably four or five NCGA titles. Really? Out of this field. Yeah. You know, so it's, that stings it's, a little. It, it hurts a little bit. It's, yeah. And you know, as as most people think that you know, you just go out there and get that NCGA corn. Yeah, yeah it don't really happen that way. Yeah, it's it's kind a of a spot on the yeah, map. And it's kind around. of a work in progress to get right there. You know, so. Yeah. Uh, but That's you know, we've uh, we didn't put this field, this corn. As you look at it, has zero dry fertility. Really. So <laughs> this has, this tells you what was what it was. You know, but it has zero dry fertility. It has one. Um, it had the planter load and then the wide dropping. Put one foliar pass, one fungicide on this. Right. Um, and that's all we done. That's wild, but what a <laughs> what a perfect opportunity to run that kind of program when you yep. know, you know, what's next gonna give year up wasn't wasn't what's gonna, gonna be there. But. So your goal here, the goal, and I've done it once or twice, and it's a goal, it's like a four hundred bushel goal. Right. But if you can ever go dollar for dollar on inputs to bushels. It's a good day. That's, that's yeah. a good day. You know, yeah. so so you know, you don't always. It ain't really a good thing to have those goals. Sure. You know what I'm saying, Mark? You got them in your back pocket, anyways. <laughs> but, but it lets us learn what you can do as a foliar program. You know, um, with with some of the products y'all have. You know, with this field has cowboy on it. You know, sure. Um, and also some of y'all's potassium acetate. Yep. Well, you look at it from. I'm looking from top to bottom. I mean, you're not cannibalizing any leaves whatsoever. I mean, yeah. we're you're way into brown silk here and i mean these plants look happy like, and healthy and i mean the way they're supposed to right i, I mean at that, once upon a time it might have had a load put yeah, on it you know what sure. i'm saying you can tell again you can tell that some of these you know they, they took some heat you know but you can tell that some of these are um you know that we had some good groceries under before this is just a look how good they filled to the tip you know we were in a couple fields dry land fields earlier yep. and it Not cannibalized back story. like that. Yeah, you know? I mean, half the year was 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 peeled back. But you know, us. when you're dealing with the heat we've dealt with here, we had a seven tenths rain on some of the ground. Right. And it's not been like consistent. It's been yeah, patchy, and then we've had an inch and a half, and that seven tenths right. was right behind uh, 
it was probably the, a month ago. Right. So, man, it's been rough. It's real life right here, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. You know, this field gives some hope of what our program is. And, uh, you know, we've got some corn that's similar to this. And let us know, you know, we can walk out here since they made us a good highway and we can check it a lot easier Absolutely. and walk through the middle of another field. But that kind of tells you where our infer program is, uh, how well our planter done on based on the ear height, the uniformity of that. And uh, Well, I think it shows you too. I mean, obviously, let's well, not fool everybody. You're going to have some sweet spots that you yeah. can get some good corn out of. But yeah. This was the year that everybody went to the bank. Yep. Ain't nobody ever trying to build the bank this year. We're cashing her We're out cashing a little bit. We're cashing out a little bit. But you know, we're sitting out there at Urea, high as it was. I know liquid I paid up to uh, up to uh, 720, I think, maybe, right. is what I give a ton on 28, you know. So, right. man, the year before was at 190. Yes. So everybody thinks, you know, the market's like, oh, it's all up. You see how high the corn is? Well, you know, that's, uh, what, four times? Right at four times? Well, I don't think corn is four times higher than it was. It's not. It's all relative. It's man. all relative. So right now, we just loaded up Pivot Bio. The Proven 40 product, mm -hmm. which is very cool. We're out looking at one of our Pivot Bio plots. I like the looks of it. It's not leaching away in the groundwater. It's not running off when we get a hard, heavy rain. Not bad, huh? Not bad. The Proven 40 is doing its job. It's that missing link that keeps my plant where it needs to be. Pivot Bio passed the test. So I feel far, like. the Pivot Bio is checking all the boxes. Yeah. checking up on the cows uh, it's uh, always good just to get a visual on them every few days and you know we're checking water mineral grass cows on grass there's that's like it's that's where they're meant to be you know they do so well on grass and the, they uh, you know the calves grow and everything and it's just a uh, you know we have to kind of bring them in the lots or cornfields in the winter time but you know they're they're definitely very content you know all summer you know eating grass just kind of doing what God intended them to do. So it's uh, very blessed to be able to raise cows with the farming and stay diversified. And it's just, it's been that way ever since I, growing up, you know, so I kind of plan to continue that tradition. And uh, with the help of my boys and Jenna and my wife and everything, they're all, they're good pieces to the puzzle. Whenever you get tired of farming, you can go look at the cows, you know, and in the winter time you get tired of the cows and then you get excited for planting. So it kind of goes hand in hand. It's, it's a, uh, it's a good life to have, so. but nonetheless, it keeps us busy all the time. So. Being a corn warrior and all, we gotta bring a little corn down for the cows and share, and so they, uh, you know, chuck them for spray them for flies and. Uh, Good job, Stetson. Whenever you can associate like food with you, you know, the cows, they're easier to, you know, look at and, you know, see. So we always bring some corn with us every time and they just come charging up here and, you know, 
kind of want to get their snack or treat, I guess. And uh, Stetson, uh, he, if it was up to him, he'd throw all about three, four, five gallon buckets of grain out by, you know, a little bit at a time in his hand. So he does a good job. He's excited. He likes that. His favorite time of year is that September when we can go, we can actually go pick a few ears out of the field and then, you know, you can feed them out by hand. But uh, we just got the corn in the bulk tank right now. So. Cows are looking good. We've got, you know, not, we haven't got the really, really big rain this year to fill up all of our ponds and stuff, but uh, nonetheless, we've caught a lot of smaller rains, you know, 50 to, you know, 30 hundreds or so. And the, so the grass, I mean, you can see the grass, I mean, it's dry, but uh, the grass is hanging on, you know, for the, you know, kind of getting the later part of July here. And, um, so no complaints. We don't have anything. We've got a lot to be thankful for. So. My son and dad are actually just uh, closing off one pasture. You got a couple different paddocks. You know, they graze a lot better if you put them in a, a smaller pasture within your pasture and you graze it for a few days or weeks, depending on the size, and then move them to a new pasture. And then it kind of gives that grass a rest and a break and it comes back nice and gets a lot of good new growth. I could have. You guys want a souvenir? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so we're out here today with our friendly BASF rep. Yeah, I'm Frantina Williams. I'm located out of the Huntsville area up here, and I cover all of North Alabama and some of Northeast Mississippi with BASF. We've had the last couple of years get to know each other well, you know, and I'm banging a lot of questions off over, you know, I was this morning, we was talking, had a, had mm -hmm. a week conversation this morning, you know, Absolutely. we talked about some residual and some stuff that we do and, and in our program and, and it's, it's never too early and especially that's what we've learned as you and the retailer and us and mm -hmm. the farmers, it's never too early to be talking about a program anymore. Absolutely. You know, it used to be that we would crank it up, you know, week before we run the planter, like, hey, what are we going to spray? We're going to burn down. What's our plan? Right. And now we're like four months in front of the planter, like, hey, what are we going to do? Where are we going to, where are we going to get it from? Absolutely. Yeah, this is, like I said, we would dig in this a little bit better, but it was just flown today. You can, like, smell it. It smells like money. Like money spent, money made, money spent, money, definitely money made. Yeah, definitely absolutely. You money see how made. green this still is? That's right. And for those of you watching at home, it is actually 100 degrees. No exaggeration, <laughs> 100 degrees, and we don't even know what the feels like is. So for this to be this color of green is phenomenal. Yeah. But because we started it. Five with high. Yep. <laughs> exactly. That's that early planning that we're talking about. So this has had two applications on it thus far. Uh, we had one pre-tassel, mm -hmm. and then we come again here at Brown Silk. And may actually try another one. I don't know. It could possibly maybe try another one at a hey, half talk rate or something. You know, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. But you can see on the leaves here, we like talked about it earlier, but you can see we'll just pull this leaf down. And I don't know if y'all can see that shine to it, but it had a good, it had good coverage with a, with a plain, uh, we use towel flying service. They've been good to me, neighbors of ours, you know, just like family, but uh, they done a good job on this. We got a good, got a good coverage on it. Pretty good leaf right there too, ain't it? Mm -hmm. That's like long good. as your leg, ain't it? 
if you're thinking about disease control, then it's normally a reaction, right? You see someone or your neighbor down the street got some disease you want to put a fungicide on. With weathers like this and we don't see any sign of it slowing down or getting any cooler, that's where that plant health aspect really comes in because that's what's going to help you retain water where he was mentioning the cooling effect. So it's going to open the stomas, retain the water, you know, all the good stuff about plant health in general that just encourages that plant to continue in its vegetative state, to continue growing, to not abort any kernels throughout and everything like that, or stress tassel to where, you know, it can't properly give the nutrients down the salk. Um, so just having that proactive mindset has definitely been a huge help in this area. When we get into a window like we went through the last month, Frantina, you know, where it's 100 degrees for three weeks in a yeah. row, I mean, it's the hand we dealt, you know. Mm -hmm. So, but we can definitely tell where we put fungicides on and where we didn't. We did hold longer. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and but you know, how long can it hold? I mean, it's not a miracle worker. And in conditions like this, you're not looking for a home run. You're just hoping to get it to your next rain, right? Yeah. And then you can reassess and kind of see how much more money you want yep. to put into it, where you've won some, where you've lost some, and just kind of mitigate all the stressors that are in the environment in general. You know, maybe it's too much rain, maybe it's not enough yep. rain in our case. And so having these things just kind of even the playing field. 16 around, how long is it? That's 40 long. Dang. So 16 by 40. Um, let's just hope we got a bunch of these out there. You want to see some good corn? <laughs> you want to see some yeah. good corn? Oh. So, Frantina, here's my witness. I'm live on camera. We're in the cornfield, and Seth just said what, Frantina? It's the best corn you've seen all year, as far as uniformity goes. I didn't even say it. I didn't even say it. So y'all go to looking at my score. Let's make sure that y'all give me a big shout out on the score thing because I need all the help I can get. If there is any such thing as people voting in to give Chad like a bonus point of any kind at all, I'll take them. Anything. Please. Hope the good Lord shine on us and we can get some ample rain for our double crop beans because they like a long way away. We can make them like in frost date. You know, I don't even, <laughs> like we get done with them in October. So this corn right here is Frantina. This is Frantina corn. You know why this is Frantina corn? Because instead of five foot high Veltema ready to apply, this is five ears we hope we make. So this is called Frantina. One, which we won't, we, but we gonna call it. We got, we got silk here. We gonna call it. We won't ever get a kernel off of it, y'all, but I'm gonna go on and call it. One, two, three, four, five. I know what it is. It's all this red dirt. You see all these clods around this? When you put that red dirt clod around there, mm, set it free. Just set it free. Who needs black dirt? I wish I was in high state. <laughs> Farmers deserve a nitrogen that works as hard as they do. One that stays with the crop until the job is done. It's time to turn to a better nitrogen with Pivot Bio. first year of Altima was available. They had very limited product for testing and stuff and we ran a test with uh, Valtima. And the Valtima was seven bushels an acre better. And like, you could see it to the row, like dad was in the combine and he had no idea that I had sprayed all this and he's like, what'd you do here? You know, it's greener, better, standing better, yielding better. And, and so, and that was a, that was all I really needed to see that, like, yeah, this is a, you know, so then that very next year when it was more, you know, widespread available, you know, we, we loaded up. So it is a good, it's a very good fungicide. fertilizer to go fertigate essentially. It's going right here to the home quarter so you don't have to go too far. But for those of not familiar fertigate it's just we're just putting some nutrients through the pivot along with the water and great way to 
to get an application out there without having to take a rig out there and you know doing it. So works pretty well. Yeah, nitrogen's always in it, um, obviously. Um, but then you know we've done you know potassium and uh, a lot of boron and you know all kinds of different things. So you know kind of go off tissue samples. Depend. You know each field's a little different. You know kind of a little different recipe. So yeah. At least we didn't overflow it when the Corn Warrior guys were here, right? Yeah. Some fertilizer for the, for the hailed corn. Yes. set. Put that back in that satchel. It's broken off, but it worked. This was going to be some contest stuff. We did some concept ag stuff here, um, but uh, the top end definitely got knocked out of it already. Oh, sure. but No, it looks good though. So this field in particular, we got the hail and the wind was a lot worse. You can see all these plants here, they never came out of it. This thing's all twisted up. Uh, you know, it's like trying to put an ear on down here four or five inches off the ground. This one, just sh little shoots coming out of the stalk. Um, another one. There's just a lot of, a lot of blemishes and gaps. You know, a green snap, and you notice all the leaves down here. These are all shredded from the hail. Um, it also flipped one tower of this small pivot that waters this piece here. Um, we did get that fixed. Um, I mean, the corn that is here looks all right, but you know, you wish, you wish all these would have made it but they didn't so here's some more you can get a lot of you know disease started when your leaves get torn open like that we just ran this pivot here oh two days ago and wanted to see, just kind of look see how we're looking on moisture and you know it's been over 90 every day so in the corn we're just spooling up into that peak usage time so moisture is huge right now it's not super wet but it ain't dry so keep it rolling a little, we got a little higher population there, here. Yeah, I can see. Yeah, you can tell there's, there's more plants there. Absolutely. What'd you, how many did you find that busted off? 10 out of 50, so 20. Next, probably will be a V10 Valtima application. It's so much more than fungicide. It goes above and beyond disease control. Really like the BASF fungicides. It's a stress mitigator. It's plant health. But we have applied a toad on this farm, you know. Done a great job for me. Definitely money made. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely you see how green this still is? That's right. It's never too early to be talking about a program anymore. <laughs>